Hello guys, I'm back again from Sparkles College. Let's continue our lecture that we just left behind. So um, this is the continuation of the same lecture. We were on the slide where it says that unethical business practices. So now individuals can make unethical choices like conflict of interest, bribery, gift giving, receiving, invasion of privacy or confidentiality, dishonest hiring practices, insurance fraud, credit card fraud, internet abuse, etc. So let's just, you know, go through these one by one. Conflict of interest. I mentioned this to you previously as well, that this is a kind of a dilemma, right? Where you need to see that, okay, you know, your business, your business decision is actually being influenced for a personal gain, right? So you can also see that it's written over here. The definition is also provided a situation in which a business decision may be influenced for personal gain, right? So let me give you an example over here, okay? For example, a company owner, right? He is saying that, you know, he, he should, th this is a conflict of interest that he's going to have is that he knows that there's a lot of inflation in the com uh, country at the moment, right? And, you know, everyone is increasing their employee salary. Just an example. So this is something that is being done by each and every organization. Why? Because of the ever increasing inflation, which is actually, you know, just touching the sky at the moment. And they think, not they think, actually everyone thinks that it's very, you know, good to increase the salaries at this point because this will help these employees to survive in a better way and to earn their best basic necessities of life. So the conflict of interest over here is that being a CEO, you know, he says that, okay, I know the ethical, uh, you know, process, the ethical principles over here, the, which are backed by the moral values says that, okay, I should raise the salary of my employees for sure, right? But he says that if I'm going to, uh, you know, increase the salary of my employees, that's gonna, you know, obviously decrease my profit. Why? Because it's going to increase the cost that I'll have to cater when it comes to paying off my employees. They, I will have to pay them more as compared to before, right? So here, what he's going to do that he knows that he, this is something which is very important. This is something that needs to be done for the employees to keep them motivated and to make sure that, you know, they're paying, they're, they have been paid fairly and you're not just, you know, giving them not so good wages because at the end what will happen they're going to get demotivated they won't they wouldn't want to work here because they're not being paid fairly right they're being underpaid so this is a situation in which according to the inflation it is in the right and trust of the employees and it, it is in the right and trust to increase their wages overall increase their salary so that they can uh, you know just earn a decent living but because you know as a CEO that no, it's going to affect your personal gain, you're going to take the opposite decision and you're not going to increase their salaries. Uh, maybe you're going to, you know, just say that we, because of um, some increasing cost inflation, we need to decrease the salaries of the employees. Maybe you do this with, that, with, with them. And if not this, you might just keep the salaries on the same point, right? You're not going to increase them when, when it was needed and it was required. So this is one conflict of interest that needs to be, uh, you know, that would arise that you have a conflict of interest on your side that your interest as a CEO is to um, save maximum profit. But then you know that this is something that you're going to be only be done if you're going to, you know, stop the increment of your uh, employees' wages and this is going to be against their interest, right? So there is a conflict of interest, conflict of both interests, right? So business decision is being influenced for a personal gain. Is this clear to everyone? If it's not clear, please write in the chat box. I'm again telling you uh, any questions that you have, just, you know, make sure you use the comment section give your comment and in the next video i'll try to cover and you know revise all these concepts for you if you're not able to understand these then it comes bribery gift giving and receiving now bribery for example i can say that if someone has to you know um, a manager needs to get something done right maybe something wrong he's going to promise one of his employees that okay i'm going to give you extra money but do this wrong uh you know action for me so that is bribing him to do that right gift giving maybe that see uh, that manager would say that okay if you're going to do this work even though it's wrong it's 
against the moral values i'm going to give you gifts maybe the employee is doing and uh, maybe an employee is uh, practicing an unethical behavior if he's receiving that gift despite knowing that this is something a wrong thing that he's going to do or he has done right so this is another uh, unethical choice that they have made then invasion of privacy or confidentiality when you are working in a company or a business it is your responsibility to maintain its confidentiality right maintain privacy if i for example working in a company uh, you know select an unethical choice i want to choose something that is unethical what i'll do is maybe i'm going to leak the data to the competitors or i'm going to leak the data to anyone who shouldn't know what's going on in the company why because i have some kind of interest over here maybe he's going to give me something maybe he has bribed me or something like that right so this is invasion of privacy or confidentiality then dishonest hiring practices once again an hr manager should never be involved in favoritism should always you know have a fair means of hiring and that's how he should hire so again dishonest hiring practices is also an unethical choice then insurance fraud or credit card fraud just an example for you know for example um you are um, an insurance company right and you take insurance insurance premiums and maybe you're going to manipulate the data and say that no we have not received this monthly premium from you people and that's kind of a fraud that you're doing as a business and then they maybe who who is the insured person maybe they would claim that yes we have given you the money so that's even though they know that they haven't so that's again a, a fraud that they're doing right and then again manipulating data you know using someone else else's credit card or just to make payments or something like that within a business within an organization by either party by any stakeholder is against uh, you know the ethical choices and it's totally an unethical choice and that is why it's prohibited then internet abuse um for example cyber crime or any sort of misusing of internet you know for your benefit is again something which is an unethical choice conflict of interest i have already explained it's a situation in which a business decision may be influenced for personal gain so i think this is pretty clear if not uh, let me know and i'll explain again so this is a very nice picture uh, i really like this picture how important are ethics in today's society right so this is something feel just as if i am standing somewhere here and you people are sitting here and listening to me so i really hope that you learn something today and whenever you know in your life you're ha- working in an in, in a business environment or you were yourself opening a business please make sure that your business and ethics they go hand in hand in hand okay right <clears throat> then we have on the job ethical dilemmas again this is one on the same thing i'm i won't spend more much time on it because we have already discussed these dilemmas and conflict of interests so conflict of interest situation in which a business decision may be influenced for personal gain i already told you how this happens that you know uh, two of two people or two parties or more parties in trust is being compromised and you don't know what you should do like i gave you the example of salary right then we have honesty and integrity telling the truth and adhering to deeply felt ethical principles in business decisions right so ethical challenge honesty and integrity is another decision uh, another challenge uh, in ethics like for example if your manager is telling you to say a say a lie or to you know do not uh, practice honesty and he is your direct manager and he is expecting you to listen to him even though you know that it's in against the interest of the company so you should not do that right so again maintaining honesty and integrity is a challenge which is a common business challenge then we have loyalty versus truth again you can use the same manager uh, manager's example business people expect employees to be loyal and truthful but ethical conflicts may arise if he if the manager is ex- is expecting his one employee to be loyal and asking him to do something which is wrong right so a conflict may arise and what should that employee do this is an ethical dilemma he knows that this is something which is against the moral values and principles since but still uh, you know he's thinking of doing it maybe because his manager is asking him to do so this is again a challenge that he needs to overcome and he needs to refuse that no i can't do anything wrong right because that's in the that's against the ethical principles 
then we have employees disclosure of illegal immoral or unethical practices in the organization again the same thing whistle blowing this is a very important concept that i would love you to actually understand so what whistle blowing is basically that for example you know uh you are a, an employee right and if you if it it a person often an employee who reveals information about activity within a private or public organization that is deemed illegal immoral illicit unsafe or fraudulent so this is something which is wrong this is a challenge that a business is facing in terms of ethics right so whistleblowers can use a variety of internal or external channels to communicate information on allegations so this is again again a ethical dilemma which is known as whistleblowing so i hope whistleblowing is clear to you if someone asks you what's whistleblowing you should tell that you know employees disclosure of illegal immoral or unethical practices in the organization is the concept of whistleblowing then we have this uh, how organizations shape ethical conduct code of ethics conduct uh, you know a formal set of gu guidelines for maintaining ethics in the workplace to defining basically what's right what's wrong you should make sure that you know um, you know you have set those boundaries you have set those benchmarks that what is right what is wrong what needs to be done what needs not to be done in an organization that is basically the code of ethics again backed by the moral values very important concept codes of ethics cannot detail a solution for every ethical situation so corporations provide training in ethical reasoning along with uh, you know uh, basically what along with logic basically what they're trying to say is that code of ethics cannot detail a solution for example not every ethical situation will have the same solution so you need to set some codes and guidelines which is going to help you that in situations where you are not being told what to do you still know what to do what's right and wrong why because you have those code of ethics with you and those code of conducts with you right uh so good ethics means good business uh, obviously a fair and nice business then we have ethical environment where we have you know ethical leadership this is the last slide i believe okay now this is the second last one so ethical leadership is very important uh, you know executives must demonstrate ethical behavior in their actions once a leader is ethical all his you know subordinates will be ethical as well an ethical action helping employees recognize and reason through ethical problems and turning them into ethical actions so first of all they should be aware of ethics they should have education employees should have education they should be able to take action and they should be able to be the leaders who are going to actually make sure everyone else uh, performs in a ethical way social responsibility the duty to do what is best for the good uh, best for the good of the society so this is social responsibility i'm going to also touch this concept again in the next lecture uh, in detail so corporate social responsibility is to make making sure what is best for the people uh, in the organization management's consideration of profit consumer satisfaction and societal well-being of equal value in evaluating the firm's performance so not just profit but satis consumer satisfaction societal well-being is of equal importance contributions to the overall economy job opportunities and charitable contributions so if you're making money of this organization make sure you do something charitable as well you should go plant trees maybe gift amount to poor people as well so make sure that you are doing running a good business that's all uh, i'll see you in the next lecture guys i'm going to also upload this video link over here please go and see the video as well and you know if you have any questions just let me know i hope you had fun thank you very much for your time and in the next lecture i'm going to start again with social responsibility in detail so that we can make sure that we know this uh, in a better way and i hope this lecture was of help to you please uh, you know you know Thank you for your time and best regards from Sparkle College. See you guys later. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.